All right, joining us right now is Regeneron's founder, chairman, and CEO, Dr. Len Schleifer. Regeneron announced a $256 million deal to acquire 23andMe back in May, but 23andMe wants to reopen the bidding after receiving a $305 million offer from its co-founder and former CEO, Ann Wojcicki. All right, Len, first of all, thank you for joining us. I, I was surprised to hear this coming out of the congressman's mouth yesterday and, and kind of pushed back immediately. Like, wait a second, Regeneron, we know Len Schleifer, he comes in here, ties, close ties to the Communist Party. Joe and I were both like, what? Um, well, let's just get to, do you speak Mandarin, Schleifer? <laughs> Not a word. Not fluent. <laughs> Not one word. Have you been to China? I've never been to China. Uh, you called immediately and, and said, what, what, what is he talking about? Like, yeah. What is he talking about? Well, I think, the, you know, the honorable uh, congressman from Kentucky uh, and chair of the House Oversight Committee is trying to do his job and protect uh, American individuals' data from falling into the wrong hands. But as far as him saying that we have very close ties with the communist Chinese government, uh, that's just categorically not true. I suspect he might have been given some wrong information by his staff. What, what deals have you done with China that, that could be construed into that? Yeah, so um, our, our main products um, are actually sold through uh, non-Chinese companies who have businesses in China, like Sanofi sells our Dupix in China, Bayer sells our Ili in China. So we don't actually have any direct business in China. We have done some licensing deals and some uh, supply agreements, things like that, like every other company does. Uh, but uh, nothing that you would consider. You offered a therapeutic for a virus that originated in a lab in China. And we did come up that with... That doesn't really constitute uh, close... Maybe that is close size of the CP. I, I don't know whether the CCP well, was... They create the disease and we create the cure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you do have ties. I don't think it exactly works that no, way. No, that's not... Uh... And, and, you know, as you know well, uh, that monoclonal antibody... Uh, save the president Trump's life. So uh, it, it, I, it was a timely therapeutic. Uh, at it that it point. was. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole other story. We could devote hours to it. Well, let, let's talk about 23andMe. I, I am, am somebody who has given my genetic material to 23andMe a long time ago, you know, 14, 15 years ago. I have concerns about what this means. Um, why do you want it? Right. So, look, we understand privacy concerns and individuals not wanting their DNA uh, to fall into other people's hands um, for nefarious reasons or for no reason. You're entitled to um, manage your own DNA. On the other hand, I have a child with a genetic illness, and I would be happy if his genetics would be able to help other children like him or prevent disease in the future. And so there is this tension between doing world-class research with genetics, which Regeneron does, uh, we have sequenced uh, nearly 3 million individuals in a totally de-identified way. Uh, and so we're trying to balance absolutely respecting individuals' privacy, but moving forward uh, in biotechnology and genetics research. As the consumer, I mean, look, I, I have a child with a rare genetic disease, too, and I'm all in favor of that. But as a consumer, I didn't give you the right to have my genetic material? It, it, should there be an opt-in policy instead of an opt-out policy as it exists today? How do I know that you're going to protect my safety and my standards and my privacy? Yeah, I, you know, the details of the consent forms and what have you is something that the court is looking over very carefully. Um, as far as if we were the winner, I think we have a long history of protecting people's uh, genetic and other health information, and we take that extremely seriously. Um, but once again, we're trying to set this balance. You know, there's a commission called the National Security Commission on Emerging Biotechnology. And actually, Eric Schmidt is one of the, of Google fame, is one of the commissioners. And they recognize that we're in a big competitive situation here. And biotechnology is critical to our national security, literally our physical security, our health security, our food security. Uh, and we have to make sure that we advance that in a way that's consistent with Americans' belief that individuals have the right did, to... Did you right, but why privacy? is it for sale? Why, like, why it, is my information for sale? Well, I don't think... Instead of me saying, OK, I agree with you, and I, I'll sign off, and you can take yeah, it. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy with people uh, affirmatively signing off and, or not signing off, as the case may be. Right, because I'd have different thoughts if it was a Chinese company. I wouldn't want you, them to... I don't understand why Regeneron's even interested, except that it's 200... You, you, what is that? Nothing. You find that right. in the couch? Right. Uh, at, 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 you're a $55 billion company. Um, 
that was a, a company that was worth a lot more. Is this just a, an attractive price? Does it fit in with, uh, with Regeneron's long-term business? We don't business? know if we're even going to win this. In this no, program. but if you did, if it, did it's it, not, I don't see it as some type of... Uh, it, is it essential to us? Absolutely not. Does it do uh, anything it for fit, you other yeah. than it's really cheap? No, it, well, we just don't want to buy things that are cheap, you know. We want to buy things that have value. Well, to I mean, us. It, 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 it's and sort it, of you could. It might take a lot of dots to get to how it makes sense for Regeneron, right? I, no, I think that remember we have done more to use genetics to create new drugs. I think than any other company in our industry. Okay, so and, and we could do with more genetics. We could get more drugs faster. Um, uh -huh. And so I think that is important. How, how would it work? Like, if you had this information, how would you kind of put it into your pipeline? What would you be going after first? Do you already have targets right. for, so, for drug potential candidates? Or Yeah, well, what the genetics actually would allow you to do, once we uh, satisfied properly the privacy aspects uh, of acquiring the DNA and de-identifying it so it can be utilized without knowing whose it is, what you need to do is get DNA and get health information, marry them, but strip out any personal identifier. Once you have that, we have shown that the more people you have, the more power you can um, ask questions about how our genes determine our health. And if you can figure that out, you can come up with drugs, as we have. Some of the biggest and uh, most important drugs in the world um, have been predicted uh, exactly like Dupixin. It, our genetics d uh, predicts all the half a dozen or more indications that Dupixin would work in to treat allergic diseases. Like what? But for allergic diseases. Yeah, allergic yeah. diseases like yeah. asthma, like eczema, like eosinophilic esophagitis and so forth, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The genetics provides you a lot of confidence on how to proceed, You're where to proceed. Me. Okay. You, you are swaying me because I, I, I do know one of the huge arguments in the rare genetic commu uh, disease community is if we could test uh, children as they're born babies as they're born, that would be the key to trying to find cures, trying to find better um, identification and, and better treatment. Let, let me give you a fabulous example that will yeah. really get you on our side. If you imagine there are children, not that many, who are born, thankfully, thankfully not that many, who are born profoundly deaf. And we now know it's because of a single gene mutation that they're profoundly deaf. Well, the scientists we general on have actually, and we can show you, maybe the next time we're here, we can show you a video of a child who never heard anything. And now it can communicate, talk, and understand because we put a gene back in their ear, back in, the, in their ear, and it restored hearing. That is a miracle.